I don't know where the stop recording, um, but we'll just kind of back up in time. So the first thing I did is I created um, a sketch. So that was the first step, created a sketch, did um, a dimension for the outside of two, did a dimension here of 0.244, and then I created a construction line, made it vertical, and then dimensioned that so it's 0.7. Did an extrusion of thickness, and then I added a work axis in the middle here, and then I added a work plane at an angle, and then made it a little bit bigger. Um, so you could see it. And now we're ready to put this on our axle. So I'm going to turn our axle on so we can see it. And I'm going to join, and this time I'm going to use a rigid constraint because I don't want this to rotate around the axle. I want them to rotate together. So to create that rigid constraint, I'm going to click here, and I'm actually going to click on the midpoint. And now if you look, you can see that this work axis or this work plane and this work plane are aligned, which is exactly what I want. So when I rotate this, I can actually see those work planes working together. Uh, my zero degrees is my lowest orientation of my follower. So my follower is going to be up here, and this is the shortest distance or the lowest point of that follower when I create this. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I'm going to turn on a few of the other items that are here. Um, like the bottom um, and maybe the back wall, which I think is front too. And I'm going to go back to my main assembly. And you can see that this cam is going through the bottom plate there. And if we looked at it from the side, you can see it there. It's way too big. Um, and you're like, well, how do, you, how do you know what size to make it? Um, well, we can do a little inspecting. And we can say, okay, what's the distance on the inside of this opening? And that distance there is 2.75 inches. And if we do from top to bottom, so let me click off of there, top to bottom, that's 2.625. So the, the most space we have is this, um, like to work with, but usually you wanna have some clearances. So I would say maybe 2.5, or even 2.25 to give you about a quarter of an inch above and below your cam would be appropriate. Um, but right now we're this is way too big. Um, so how do we how do we know what the biggest size is that we can make? So let me show you how that gets done. So if I go back to my cam, back to my sketch, which is right here, we can actually create like the ghosted version of what it would look like in the highest position. So to do that, I'm going to do a center with construction lines. So C and X gets me to center circle this. And I'm going to dimension it with this two inch dimension. I'm then going to create a construction line. So it's still in construction mode between these two. I'm going to make that vertical. And then I'm going to dimension this to be the same dimension as this. And now this gives me the floating version of my circle in its highest position. So here's the low point, here's the high point. Now that whole distance from there to there can't be more than 2.5 inches. So we can create another construction line. So it's in construction mode, I just hit L. I go from the bottom point here to the top point up here. And again, it's, it's not black, so to make that black, I'm gonna make it coincident with the center point here, and now that turns it black. And now I'm gonna do a dimension of this line. And this is gonna be what's called a driven dimension. We're gonna say okay. We can't actually change this, but this will show us the total height of our cam when it's at the low point to high point. So this is 3.4, way too big. So let's start making some changes